Hey, Edith. Yes, Christy. There was a sale going on at the soil shop today. Yeah? Everything there was cheap as dirt. dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners from Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening has gotten very popular. And we've noticed more and more people picking our brains for tips and troubleshooting about gardening. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips. A fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down. Okay, my mic is in a good place. Is your mic in a good place? I think my mic's in a really good place. So yes. our mics are in good places. Uh, uh oh, what does that mean? Let's start. Let's go. All right. Hi. Hi. I love when you open with a provocative question like that. Is your mic in a good place? <laughs> yes. We mean microphone, not guys. We have just hanging around, right? <laughs> my mic. <laughs> Hi, Christy. Hello, Edith. What's going on over there? Well, here we are at episode 28. Wow. Right? No, 29, I think. Oh, our engineer is saying 29. 29. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That sure is. Thank you, listeners. We haven't said hi to you yet for, for sticking with us. We're glad you're out there. We feel you. We do feel you. And we also noticed that some of the older things we've done, like not sins, but podcasts, yeah. People, new listeners are backing up and going to some of our older podcasts. That's so very true. Uh, and we've had people joining the garden party. Oh, that makes me so happy. And um, if people become uh, a deadheader mm -hmm. or higher, yes. which is just $10 a month mm -hmm. yes, to help support the podcast, to help us keep it free, and to just... Say that you care about what Edith and I are doing in the community that we're trying to create. You yes. get some fun rewards. And one of the rewards is that you get your name mentioned on our podcast. Yeah. So this week we want to give a big shout out to Lauren. And thank you, Lauren. We love you, Lauren. She was our first patron. Oh, I'm glad we're honoring her first. Um, the other thing that you might notice is we've been sneaking in our patrons' names. Now, if you're not a patron, you wouldn't know this. But if you are, we've been sneaking in your names to our little commercials and pod plays. Because that's just how much we appreciate you. That's why. And if Lauren keeps her ear out, she might hear it in this episode. Uh-huh. She just might. Yeah. Listen up. <laughs> and if you're a member of our garden party... If you're a certain member, you'll also get an Upside Down Tulips coffee mug. Those are some pretty cool mugs. They're very nice looking. They are. If you're an attic tomato, you get a t-shirt. Uh, they are styling, let me tell <laughs> oh, you. Oh, you know, Edith, what I was going to tell you is that I was on a meeting yesterday. Yeah. And one of my friends from across the country, after the meeting was over with, she stood up and she showed me she was wearing an Upside Down Tulips t-shirt. Oh, oh, my gosh. Isn't that nice? The same thing happened to me. What? The same thing happened to me. My friend Judy in Boca Raton uh -huh. sent me a picture of her wearing a mask, an Upside Down Tulips mask. <gasps> nice. Isn't that nice? You know, masks are on sale right now, are Upside Down Tulips masks. Oh, folks, I didn't know that. I wasn't willingly introing this little sales pitch. They it just are. It's just We partner nice. with Tea Public. And they have a little sale going on. If you buy four masks, it's like 20% off. Yes. And they're black with our logo in the lower corner. And let's face it, you can't have too many masks these days. Yeah. Yeah, because we don't know how long this is going to go on. And uh, let's be prepared. And be fashionable. Why not? You be styling. It. Be styling. Make people say, where'd you get that mask? And if and then they'll read the mask. Then they'll know because it's written right on there. Am I right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's written right on yeah. there. Uh, and if you want to find out about how to join our patron club, our garden party, mm -hmm. or if you want to get some fun merchandise, you uh -huh. can just go to our website at UpsideDownTulips.com. Yep. It's right there. Mm -hmm. It's right there with other amusing things. Or and sign up for our newsletter. And you can find out more stuff about that, too. Yeah, the newsletter's fun, and it's short. It's not like a lengthy newsletter. It's never lengthy. It's always fun. Yeah, just something fun and zippy to get your day going. Fun like and zippy. Once a week. Fun and zippy like a cheerleader. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, what are we talking about this week, Edith? Uh, soil or dirt. 
as I prefer to call it. Yes, we'll learn the difference between what's the difference between soil and dirt. And also, I did some interesting research about the difference between topsoil, garden soil, and potting soil. I've been a gardener for a couple of decades now, and I never knew what the difference was. Oh, good, Chris. So we'll share that. Oh, excellent, excellent. Very good. And then next week, what are we going to talk about? Trees. Trees? Fruit trees, mm -hmm. shrubbery, bushes, and all kinds of trees. Yes. Yeah. Shrubbery. Shrubbery. That's what we're going to talk about. How important it is, how to take care of it, why you want it, why you need it, why you cannot live without it, or the planet. In a nutshell. That sounds fun. Sounds good. Uh, what's going on with your garden? Christy, I took that pH pantry test. You did. I did. I did it today. This is a test. It's up on our website where if you want to test, and you can do this out of your pantry, the acidity or alkalinity of your soil, which you should know because some vegetables like acidic, some like alkaline. It's so easy. You do vinegar and soil, or you do baking soda in water and soil. And if they fizz, that will tell you which one it is. Whichever one fizzes is what your soil is. If neither of them fizz, well, then you have a neutral. really nice neutral, which is what you want. So mine, Christy, I had like five or six bubbles come up, but I don't think that's a full fizz. Do you? Yeah, a couple bubbles is, that's a very fascinating question. How many bubbles equal a fizz? I don't know. But I mean, it wasn't like, you know, when you see a close-up of a Coca-Cola uh -huh. and they're like, really fizzy, fizzy, fizzy. It wasn't like that. <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh -huh. It was like, it was like it was water like a, bubbles. Was like a, oh, okay. It was like a water bubble. So anyway, I feel good about my soil. I feel good about it. And I'm glad that I did this cost me nothing who doesn't have vinegar and baking soda at home, right? And not only is that information on our website, but you could also listen to episode 26 where we talk about that, which is um, uh, from the ground up, the t first three things you should do. Sometimes, because mm -hmm. sometimes we too. just get down and scientific because <laughs> yeah. we do our research. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Anything else going on in your garden? There's really nothing going on in my garden. I did that soil test, mm -hmm. but what I would like to do is, um, I, you know, my, my mail carrier, Jeanette. I oh yes. I know. I know the story of Jeanette because we once thought we had the same Mail, mail carrier. Mm -hmm. And you left rhubarb to the wrong mail carrier. And yes, it was very embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. It, it was. <laughs> oh, I don't know how embarrassing a kindness can be, but sure. Well, I so I saw Jeanette today. You know, she was very upset about the heavy metals in our soil and the arsenic. She had never heard that. And she was really upset, as I was and you were, mm -hmm. when we found out. So I dug tiny bit deeper into that. Christy, I think we need to give a shout out to the representative who brought this up. The one who said our baby, our heavy metal levels in baby food is too high. Mm -hmm. Right? So may I do that? Yes. He is representative Raja Krishna, Krishna Maruthi. I probably mispronounced it. That's okay. He's the chairman of the Subcommittee on Economic and Consumer Policy. I also might have mispronounced that. <laughs> and he's from Illinois. Wonderful. And I didn't say Illinois. So yeah. I got that one So you right. got one right. So listen, folks, if, I know we have listeners in Illinois. and if We do happens, a lot a lot in Illinois. If he happens to be your representative, maybe you want to thank him because mm -hmm. he's the only one who really seems to give a crap about How this. nice. He's working for you. He's working for you. And unlike all some, of us. Unlike some other people that we know, and we won't even mention. I want to give some good news to people, though. Yeah. In case people got a little depressed by all the heavy metals in our soil. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is uh, the magazine of Heifer International, which is a wonderful, wonderful group. Um it's an international organization that is concerned with poverty and food and stuff like that. Good stuff. Okay, so here's what you do. Renewing the earth. And we can do this in our garden as well. Number one, cover cropping. I'm going to do this from now on, Christy. In the fall, I'm going to plant a cover crop. We've talked about we this for a couple of years and, and we've never done it. And I said, remember, I said, well, nature doesn't do it, so I'm not doing it. But I was wrong. So... These cover crops protect and enrich the soil, and I'm going to do one. Avoid tilling. 
We've talked about that. Mm -hmm. I, I do a no-till, and I think you've become a no-till gardener That's as true. well. Yes. Because that way, if you don't till it with those big roto rooters, no, roto tillers, <laughs> roto rooter. <laughs> You're not going to kill microorganisms. You're just going to leave them mm -hmm. where they need to be. Also, when you rototill, it releases stored carbon into the atmosphere, and that's the last thing we want that causes climate change. They're learning how to raise pigs in forested areas. So if you have a forested area and a pig, there you go. Put them together. No that chemicals. Makes sense. Doesn't that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. No chemicals. Holistic planned grazing, which is where this is the exact opposite of what uh, the ranchers and big agriculture does. You don't put your cattle out to graze in the exact same place all the time. You move them through. It's crop, just like crop rotation. Which was the it's next cow, thing. It's cow rotation. It's the cow rotation. The next thing is crop oh, diversity. Good. Don't be a mono. Don't do monoculture. Don't do the same crop in the same place all the time. They think that's one of the reasons that caused the Great Dust Bowl. That's exactly right. Yes, they do. And I think it probably did. Plus erosion and stuff like that. Um, and the last thing, and we'll talk more about this next week when we do trees, is creating vegetation buffers, mm. which um, take water, you know, is so th floods are less. And But we'll talk more about that next week. But I wanted people to know that there's a lot of stuff being done by good organizations to save the planet. Oh, I love and that. Some be, good news. Yeah, don't be depressed, you know. And in your own garden, you can actually make a difference. Yes. You can make a difference in your little patch. I love that. Me too. Hey, thanks, Edith. You're welcome. Oh, we had snow. Yeah, we thank did. Thank heavens. Now, a lot, we say thank heavens. There are a lot of other people in the United States who are mm -hmm. going, oh my gosh. We had snow. Yes. Well, in Colorado, we've had very little snow, and we need snow. Yeah. So we got a couple inches of snow. Yep. And uh, I love snow, personally. I, I love when it snows. It's so pretty. And thank goodness we have snow. And you like shoveling. And I love shoveling. Oh, my gosh. It's so <laughs> zen. I love it. Oh, it is. Like a little zen garden, but mm -hmm. with, with a shovel. And beautiful, beautiful snow. It was pretty snow. Yeah, it was yeah, really pretty. Yeah, it was nice to see. Uh I could. I noticed that my before the snow happened. I noticed that I have tulips coming up. You do? Yes, because they're by the house, so it's a little warmer. Okay. And I planted a new little section right by the house, uh -huh. and those are coming up. So that's a good sign. How much up are they? My new ones, maybe, maybe about an inch. Is but this, I have other ones. That is are, it early that are, or is it about this? It's, it's February. It's February. And yeah. they always come in February. Yeah, well, that's and, you know, exciting. And tulips, they can be different kinds. You could have an early bloomer. You can have a mid bloomer. You can have late oh, blooming tulips. Okay. So these might be, I thought I was getting some later ones, but they're coming up. Okay. Well, that's it's, it's good. Well, yeah, it's going to be pretty. And it's a good sign that uh, the long, dark winter is, is close to being yeah. over. Oh, and I have a story to tell you. Oh, good. I love stories. So, you know how a couple weeks ago you were talking about how people were gardening and finding things in their garden? Yes. And they were finding a, a beautiful rare coins, all sorts of fun treasures. Yeah. So, this was in the news this week. And this story is from the Chicago Tribune. And I'm going to mispronounce this woman's name terribly so you don't feel so bad okay. about mispronouncing... You see, we can't pronounce people's names from Illinois very well, I guess yeah, is the deal. Yeah. Her name is Karen Altenreich, mm -hmm. and she vividly remembers the day she lost her wedding ring. It was very cold, she says, and the snow plows had plowed the snow up onto the curbs. I parked my car in front of my grandmother's house, and I was climbing over the mounds of snow, helping each kid get into the car. My hands were cold, I didn't have my mittens on, and my ring just flew into the snow. Oh. So she dug around for a bit, but her kids are waiting in the car. And to no avail, she couldn't find it. So she went back after the snow melted and searched some more, but no luck. And that was 1973. Oh, my. Flash forward 48 years later, and a woman was gardening in her yard. And she found... A wedding ring. And she contacted the local historical society. And they noticed that there was an inscription in the ring. 
and it said RA to KB four sixteen sixty six. Oh, and they were able to track down Karen and Robert Altenrecht, who are now living in San Antonio, and. The woman from the historical society says, "You don't know when you're gonna what you're gonna find when you reach out to people. Are they still together? Um, wouldn't it be a shame after all this time if the ring didn't mean anything?" Oh, and right. she, you know, expected not even to hear back. Uh, found him through Facebook, and but she found her. The uh, Karen called her back, and they talked on the phone, and they just cried on the phone together. Oh, wow. And she was so thrilled that not only was Karen alive and well, but so was Robert, her husband. They were still happy and together. Their 50th anniversary, oh, sorry, their 55th wedding anniversary is going to be April 16th. And to think they'll be getting their ring back after almost 50 years. Wow. The miracle of finding a treasure in the garden and then the last thing I'll say, because it just makes me want to cry, is that um, Karen said, somebody said to me the other day, what's the secret to a happy marriage? And I said, marry your friend. Oh, that's perfect. Isn't that just sweet? And so she got her, she got her wedding ring back from well, somebody who was gardening. So that's what was, that's what's happening. That's what's happening in my garden. That's a lovely story. Thank you, Christy. Lovely. And if you hear words or terms, folks, that you're not familiar with, or you want a good laugh, you should check out the Upside Down Dictionary on our website. Oh, yeah, you should. Mm -hmm. And if you want to see pictures of our <laughs> gardens, inspirations, we have a Facebook page. That's right. Gardening Jokes. Visit us on Facebook. Uh huh. You could also visit on Instagram. Did any of you look at uh, Christy's jugs like I asked you to do last week? <laughs> it's on Facebook. Right. <laughs> Drink your tea, dear. Wait a minute. What is this? It's your tea, dear. No, I mean what kind of a cup is this? Oh, that's an upside-down tulips mug. It was a gift from them to me because I became a patron. Look, I have one too. Hmm. It's got a tulip on it. Well, the podcast is called Upside Down Tulips now, isn't it? And the tulip on here is kind of pink. Not very manly, is it? Well, the tulip trends toward lilac, don't you think? Yes. So? And do you grow lilacs, darling? The very best in the neighborhood. Everyone says so. And you're very manly. Uber manly, I've heard it said. Everyone thinks so. I know it. Gender is a construct. <laughs> yes, it is. And look at all the other beautiful flowers you grow. Queen Anne's lace, pansies, primroses, peonies. Don't forget about my lilies and my baby's breath. <laughs> forget about them. Who could do that? You're the talk of the neighborhood. I am, aren't I? Oh, yes. Are you all better now? No. What's wrong, Hank? I want a hoodie with a tulip on the front. Well, someone has a birthday coming up now, don't they? And there may well be one on order. Oh, I love you, Susan. I know you do, Hank. Finish your tea, dear. Let's go shovel some manure. <laughs> oh, Susan, you always know the right thing to say. Come on. Bring some romance and excitement to your life. Become a patron of Upside Down Tulips and join the Garden Club. Because you can't beat stuff that has a tulip on it. I have tulips, Hank. Right here. Aw, that's so adorable. Join now at UpsideDownTulips.com Hey. Hey, let's talk about soil. Oh, yay, let's talk about dirt. Or soil. Or soil, or both. Let's talk about all of it. <laughs> Everything that we walk on when we go outside that isn't covered with cement, that's what we're talking about. And there's a difference between soil and dirt. Yes. Tell us. Well, soil is alive. Of course it is. And dirt is not. Dirt is dead. Dirt is dead. So soil has... That's harsh. That's just harsh, you know? <laughs> Sorry. It's harsh. <laughs> 
You know, that's way that's life is that way. Edith. I guess it is. It's and a me, cruel, it's a cruel, hard world out there. I just thought doornails, do, no doorknobs were dead, but no and doornails. Is it doornail? Dead yeah. is a doornail or doorknob? Uh, dead is a doornail. Oh my gosh, do I have a my, okay a Christmas carol? Marley was dead. Is Re- dead is a doornail. Is that where it comes from? Yes. Oh, that's great. <laughs> okay, back to soil. Oh, sorry, soil. So soil is alive. It has organisms. It has bacteria. It has microbes. Organ- yes, this is you were just saying. Mm-hmm. It has organic material. It is a complete self-sustaining ecosystem. So it can be sand and silt and clay or mixture of all mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And there can be different sized particles. It can have different texture. Mm-hmm. But it's alive. You know what's amazing, Christy? I have seen pictures of a desert when it gets a rain. Oh, I love those pictures. And for one day, these flowers come up and you th- I thought, well, sand is dead. It's just like dry dirt. It's a Yelp. different type of ecosystem with a different texture. Whole different thing, but it's alive. It's alive. And, and all those dead. flowers come up. Now, I, have, I know you love it when I have a little bit of trivia. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we might emphasize the word little, but okay. A little bit. Mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't bring out a whole tome on it. Okay. I thought you'd like to know that, the, okay, let me ask you this. Yes. How many different types of soil are there in the United States, do you think? Five. There are 70,000 different <laughs> types of soil in the United States. That's right. Okay. I won't, I won't make you go stupid with this one, but I'll let you know this, that there is in one tablespoon of soil. Uh-huh has more organisms in it than there are people on earth. Really? One tablespoon. Oh, that's pretty amazing. That's God, that's cool. amazing. It takes 500 years to form one inch of topsoil. Wow. Wow. I'm surprised Disney hasn't done a movie on soil. <laughs> and there are 5,000 different types of bacteria in one gram of soil. 5,000. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not a drug user, so is a gram a little? It's just a little, yeah, just right? a little. <laughs> it's like less yeah. than a teaspoon? Yes. Or obviously not a user of the metric system either. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess where I live? I happen to live in America. <laughs> <laughs> so we told folks that we were going to talk about the difference between topsoil, garden soil, potting soil, and um, I, I think I maybe knew a little of this, but I really didn't know really what the difference was. Okay. That when so if you go to some place and you want to get and you see a big bag of topsoil or somebody says they want to give you topsoil, what is that? Well, that is essentially the top layer of the Earth's crust. The one that it takes five hundred years, did you say? To, yes. <laughs> to make an inch. An inch of it. So yeah, that's it's, valuable stuff. It's the earth. It's this is what yeah. farmers farm in. This is if you're planting and gardening straight in the earth. Uh huh. You can buy topsoil or you have topsoil in your backyard. Mm-hmm. It's heavy. It also can contain, of course, uh, weed seeds. Of course, yeah. In addition to all the wonderful living organisms in it. Um, so some people will use this for raised beds because it's cheaper. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong it with is. it. Uh huh. It's sold in bulk. Um, you should mix it with compost. Or peat moss or vermiculite or something yes. else to lighten it up because it's very heavy. Absolutely. And if you have your own compost, you can literally stretch the amount of topsoil and it will cost you less because you've, you've created it yourself. Mm-hmm. And as in anything else you create yourself, you know how it was made, you know how pure it is. You know, and it's not, happy where it is because it was made in this environment. And it's happy where it is. That's a really good point, Christy. I hadn't mm-hmm. thought of that. Yeah, it's happy where it is, not using the metric system. <laughs> okay, next there's garden soil. Yes, garden and soil. garden soil is an amendment that is mixed with native soil and will also have composted bark or mushroom compost or well-composted cow or chicken manure that's blended in. Mm -hmm. So it's Mm -hmm. regular native soil. So essentially it's topsoil with some amendments in it that you can buy. So if you go to your garden center or your big box store, that we encourage you to go to your local garden center. Yes, we do. When you see garden soil, that's what it is. So it's going to be lighter. Okay. And, and, um, and, and, And it probably has been processed in some way that it won't have weed seeds in it 
Right, they do It'd be sometimes sterilized. process that. That's yeah, why sterilized. they do sterilize it. And then there's potting soil, which is not even soil. It's sphagnum moss, isn't it? Stuff like that. Yeah, it's a it's it's a soilless moss, peat moss, or other um, materials, organic, of mm-hmm, course, mm-hmm. like sawdust. And potting soil is mostly air. So that it's when the light. when the seed puts out a little tiny root, it can you know it does it doesn't come across um, an obstacle like of of hard dirt. Yes, right. That's what it yes. is. And yes. plants, of course, need air. Good soil, healthy soil, has air in it. Uh huh. So that the that the roots can breathe. Yes. And um, so it's very fluffy, very light, and it'll have a usually have little pieces of vermiculite or perlite. Mm-hmm. which is flakes of this feather weight rock that's been puffed up so it holds a lot of air. And this is what you use for container gardening. And it also, if you have vermiculite and stuff like that in it, it also absorbs water better. Yes, such a great point. And holds the water longer. So if you live in a hot, dry climate like we do, our summers mm-hmm. are so hot, You that's mm-hmm. what you need to consider when you are considering, you know, what soil mm-hmm. you're going to put in your garden or container bed. Yeah, it's great for containers. It's great for window boxes. It's what you would use for your house plants. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And, of course, you can start seeds with this. When we had our episode last week, which was You Grow Girl. Mm-hmm. Or and guy and guy episode twenty eight. We talked all about seed starting. You want a lighter soil. In fact, there is even a sp- specific type of potting soil called seed starting soil, which is even lighter mm-hmm. than regular potting soil. And you can start your seeds in that too. Which I think I've never used that, but I think I'm going to try that this year. I've used it before, and you know, it, you get a little bag. It's spendy. It is spendy. That's why I think I haven't yeah. used it, and because I've always been able to start seeds. Hey, listen, do you want to talk about sometimes there's an exception to the rule? Yeah. Uh, You know, because I think think I'm offering morning glories, but I'm not sure morning glory seeds to some of our patron club, but Mm -hmm. they don't like nice soil. I just took garden stuff and put it in a wooden box, and they have grown beautifully. If you fertilize them, they'll be all leaves, no flowers. So, you know, it just depends. Yeah, there's some things that, as you have said before, seeds want to grow, they want to live, and nature finds a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be perfect soil, and there's some seeds that will just do better than others. Yeah, some just like the wild. Mm-hmm. 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 Who's there? Mm-hmm. Billy, do you hear that? Of course I do. It's really loud. This is freaking me out. Is it God? I thought God was a woman. Maybe it's the Wizard of Oz. Are you the Wizard of Oz? No, I'm Big Garden. Big Garden? Like Big Pharma? Big Tobacco? That's right. What do you want? Why are you in our house? Just this big disembodied voice. So you want to have a garden this year? Yeah, so? So get out there and get tools. A royal tiller, five kinds of shovels, row covers, a greenhouse. It's just gonna be a small... A drip system, a fertilizer sprayer, pesticides. I don't know if we can afford all that. We're both unemployed. Do you want your garden to be the shame of the neighborhood? No, I don't. The abomination of the block? I'm getting my coat. The disgrace of Denver? I'm in my coat, and I'm getting my credit card. What are you doing, Lauren? I'm going to the nearest big box store, and then... Sit down, please. We're not getting any of those things. But I really want a garden. And we're gonna have one. Listen, I've been listening to Upside Down Tulips. You need seeds, a tool or two, a piece of land, or a container. That's pretty much it. We can make our own compost. We can even make our own mulch. No! Nothing will grow unless you buy all the things. There's only one way to drown out that big voice. Let's listen to the latest episode of Upside Down Tulips. That's a good idea. Christy and Edith won't yell at us.
Can we talk about worms next? I love worms. <laughs> yeah, I love worms. Do you have a lot of worms in your yard? So many worms. That's that's the first cheerful thing that happens is when I go and I start digging in my compost to see the baby worms. As soon as the uh, soil is diggable, you know, not frozen anymore, you can see the baby worms and they come by the hundreds sometimes. One shovel, you see all these little teeny t- And my kids used to look at that and just be amazed, you know? <laughs> well, here's a good test to see if you have good worms, is that you take a good huge shovel of your soil, like a 12 by 12 inches, like six mm-hmm. to seven inches mm-hmm. deep, and put the soil on mm-hmm. a tarp mm-hmm. and count the number of worms you have in that sample. If you have 10 or more, you have a healthy population of worms. If you don't have any worms at all, it means your conditions are poor. And sometimes, I think I think it used to be that I had more worms in my compost than anywhere else because the soil there got richer and richer. Mm, I'm jealous. So what I would do is I would take a shovel of the little baby worms and simply move them to another spot in the garden. Because worms die in the summer. They plant their eggs and they will die, and then the and then the baby worms will come up in the spring, mm-hmm. which I never knew that before. I never knew that at all, ever. Did you know that? I don't know how um, I thought they had, you know, babies, but I didn't think it was eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Spontaneous. I don't know. Okay, I didn't know the next thing you're going to say. Oh, okay. What are you going to say? Well, um, I love how they call worms nature's plows. Oh, because they. they- Go through and they aerate the they soil. They dig the underneath. soil. Their tunnels aerate and loosen the soil. They make it easier for plant roots to penetrate below the surface. And along the way, they drop their poop, which is a very rich fertilizer. They're called worm castings. 15 tons of dry soil per acre pass through one earthworm each year. Say that again. 15 tons of dry soil per acre pass through one earthworm each year. One earthworm? Yes. Really? Farmer's Almanac. Wow. And 1,400,000 earthworms can be found in an acre of cropland. That's amazing. Wow. That's like Ripley's Believe It or Not. <laughs> now, if you don't have any worms at all and you want to create conditions that are welcoming to worms, here are some steps. Mm-hmm. Number one. As you have said earlier, reduce your tilling. Yeah, because that'll, you know, that kills things. And cuts up the worms. I did that for years. I, I too. will never do that again. Also, you should leave organic matter on the surface. Because mm-hmm. that's yep. what the worms eat. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Mm-hmm. So be careful of, of um, and so that's essentially just saying it's like put some mulch down, people, right? Mulch yeah. it. Mulch it. <laughs> Christy, I also, I have a friend who, um, he does worm farming in his kitchen in his apartment. You can literally <laughs> grow worms in your house and then take them out to the garden. Did you know oh, that? Like he has like a little worm pasture? Yes. It's like an ant farm, only much better because <laughs> who wants mm-hmm. ants, right? Touch, yes. Um, but that's another thing you can do. You can grow them. Is it hard to corral all the worms in at night to go you under their You don't pen? let them go over the counter, Christy. <laughs> They're in an enclosed little house. Do you have to have little dogs that will help make the worms go back inside? No, no. Okay, another thing you can do is to ditch the chemicals. Mm-hmm. If you if you don't have a good worm population, we're just huge on that. We just really, if if there's one thing, if, if there's only one thing that you would listen and take advice on, it is ditch the chemicals. You'll have more worms. Have more worms. Have pure fruit and vegetables, ditch the chemicals. Okay. Can we talk more about alkaline and acid soil? Yes. Since you've already brought up the subject? Yes. And this kind of depends on where folks are, but there's some general principles about where you live in the United States, where you might lend toward um, acidic soil or where you might lend toward alkaline soil. And Christy, that's a really good point. There's not like one rule... This is a really large country with so many different zones and climates. You really need to do your homework. Like if you want to plant blueberries, you're going to want a different kind of soil than Mm -hmm. if you want to plant green beans. That's so true. So 
I remember yeah. you tried to grow blueberry, right? Didn't, yeah, it didn't work. Didn't I, work here. My, did not work. But in Minnesota. In my garden didn't work. Where I grew up, you uh-huh. could grow blueberries, you know, with your eyes closed. Oh, my gosh. In Pennsylvania, we used to go bl- wild blueberry hunting mm. for many weekends. That's because those areas are more acidic. Mm-hmm. So high rainfall areas with more tree cover will lean toward more acid soil. And we went into the woods. We went up to a mountain mm-hmm. in the woods, and that's where we found all those wild blueberries. So this is eastern and southeastern portion of the United States mm-hmm. and the Pacific Northwest. Interesting. Which includes, of course, Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. And Washington and Oregon, the blackberries up there that oh, just grow yeah. wild, and you can't even hold them back. If your soil is very acidic, you would add lime in the ground or powdered form into your soil as mm-hmm. an amendment. Now where we are, we lean toward alkaline soil in the Denver metro area because um, our pH is around 7.0 to 7.8. That's called a sweet soil. Did you know that? When you have an alkaline soil, that's Aww. considered sweet soil? No. And that's nice. This is found in low rainfall areas. So this is the western half oh, of the United States. I see. With mm-hmm. the exception of the Pacific Northwest. And for our listeners across the world, because we do have a lot of listeners in Germany and Ireland. Mm-hmm. We have listeners in Australia and Africa and I hope we South still America. have that one person in Latvia. Oh, yeah. I Remember should check. We that Latvian? Yes, we do have a Latvian listener, <laughs> right? <laughs> Not many people have their own Latvian, so I hope we still have him or her. Yeah. And, 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 and I think Ireland is the country that has our most listeners, too. And, of course, they would be very um, acidic soil mm-hmm. over there. But you can kind of figure out what kind of soil you have. And if you have... If you lean very alkaline, that means that you can add sulfate. Right. Sulfur. Mm -hmm. Sulfur. Sulfur. Mm -hmm. Or you can also lower the pH of alkaline soil over time by applying organic amendments like compost and manure, which is what we do. You know, that almost always solves like almost every problem that you have. And you have to have patience. Mm. If it doesn't take mm-hmm. the first year, I mean, I've been in my house for what, 23 years I've been amending that soil, but I have grown stuff from year one. It's just that every year gets a little bit better. That's one of the great things I think gardening teaches us mm-hmm. is patience, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I do too. Time, yeah. trips around the sun, the spring will always happen. Mm-hmm. And that may be why you just had a few bubbles when you did your test. Very true. That you lean toward neutral. Very true. Very true. Yeah, gardeners rarely demand instant gratification because there's no such thing in the gardening world. There isn't. There is not. Now, soil in the Midwest and the Great Lakes region tend to be closer to neutral because of a mix of factors. Uh, These areas have less rainfall and tree cover than eastern and southeastern United States, but they have have had intensive farming over the many generations, which have helped to increase the acid levels, where otherwise they might be alkaline mm-hmm. soils. Okay. okay. So um, probably that's why that's the breadbasket of the United States, huh? Oh, yeah. Right. It is the breadbasket. Yeah. Are there other ways that you amend your soil, Edith? Um, bes- beside, well, you know, I do the bokashi. That's my new thing. It's in a bucket. This and is your fermentation. The fermentation anaerobic. So you, I don't let any uh, air get in. So I've got that going on in a plastic bucket. And I've this got, is this is this is the fermentation amendment that you're making that includes meat. Yes. And anything. And not, it, I mean, not like a plastic and cup this, or anything. Was the starter was were beer grains, right? Yes, spent beer grains, which means they had been fermented. So that's cooking. We call it cooking you know, in the Bokashi world. And I do, um, I make big bags of leaves that I wet in big, in big bags and I leave them. If you leave them for a year or even two years, you get the most incredible black, like it's like topsoil. It's like pure, beautiful. But you can also use them after a year or after a season. And how do you amend it? Do you do you dig it in? Do you just toss it on top? You do a little I do both. both. Okay. I do both. Yeah, but um, every mm, every spring, you know, I'll dig some holes here and there, and I will just amend as I go. Mm, mm-hmm. You know, yeah, just take off as much as you can do. Exactly. Yeah, and you know, we're getting right now. Of course, most of the United States is under snow, mm-hmm. and things are frozen. 
Uh, when, when do you start doing your amending? Probably, probably in April. Let the ground thaw. Yeah, once the ground thaws, and then I can start doing not that. Not too wet. But you know, I've also I also did a lot of it last fall. Fall's a great time to do that so soil that prep. The, so that the, you know, like you said, the worms have something to eat. The microorganisms can grow, and it can work itself into the soil, become one with it, rather than just sit there yeah. in a composty like log. Yeah. You know. And have you ever heard that it's not a good idea to walk on the soil or I to have do heard the that. soil mm-hmm. when it's um, when it's wet? Yeah, do not walk on it because it impacts it. And uh, need, a good soil has air in it. Yeah, yeah. Twenty five percent air. Good soil has. Wow. And one earthworm can do a billion acres of soil. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most amazing statistic I've Isn't ever that heard. Great? What you said. The things that happen underground that it's we just have amazing. no idea. I mean, about. a little little tiny earthworm with that little teeny tiny, you know, poop hole. That's just weird and great, <laughs> and it's great. It's a miracle. It's everybody's favorite time. It's mailbag. Ring, ring. Yay! <laughs> oh, we have a great letter this week. This letter is from Mel, Edgewater, Colorado, and we both know Melanie because she makes tomato seedlings for us. Thank goodness she does. And for a lot of people, she's really good at it, but you know, folks, she proves that you don't have to be good when you start, that you learn along the way. Because she sent us this great letter and included her fails. Oh, I love it. She says, When I first started seeds indoors several years ago, I thought I needed to keep the soil good and wet. Bad idea. All the seeds rotted, and I had to start over. Oh, I've, had, I've done that before. Yep, I have done that too. And, you know, sometimes when it's late, then you plant again, and the plants are so little. Finding the right moisture level can be... It uh, is. You just learn. You just learn. Yeah. It's like bread dough. You kind of can do it by feel. Oh, that's such a great... That's a good example. Thank you. <laughs> Number two from Mel. Mm-hmm. Start too early and the plants get leggy before it's time to plant. Oh. Start too late and they're small when you plant. Yeah. True. Another thing you just kind of have to feel out. Number three. Don't put too many seeds in each cell. By cell, she means pot. I hate thinning tiny plants, so I tend to replant the extras in their own plant cell. Hey, I'm that way. I can't. I feel so bad thinning. I know a lot of people like that. They just can't thin. I can't kill my babies. I can't do it. Listen to this. She says, one year I had over 100 tomato plants to find homes for. Yikes. I remember that year. I do too. I got a lot of tomatoes from her. (laughs) Now I plant one seed per cell and have had pretty good luck with germination. And number four. Make sure you clearly label the seeds you plant or you'll have mystery plants. One year, I didn't use a permanent marker on my plant stakes and the print washed away. That was fun, quote, fun, when the time <laughs> came to plant. And I also think I was the, the recipient of some mystery plants. Yeah. That, that's like when you put stuff in your big freezer and you put it on a piece of tape and the tape falls off and yes. you have no idea what's in there. So... Mel finishes up. I tend to have decent luck starting plants inside. Fingers crossed that tradition continues this year. Big hugs, Mel. Thanks, Mel. Thank you so much, Mel. And we hope that tradition continues because she's my tomato supplier. She is the best. I hope that you guys have a tomato supplier or become one. You could become one. That's right. Yeah. Practice makes perfect. And you're doing tomatoes this year, aren't you? Yes. I'm I'm going to try. I'm going to do... I'm going to try to start almost everything on my own this year. Impressive. Yeah. If it doesn't work, I'll go to the small nursery and I will get more. But and there's always try. Mel. And there's always Thank Mel. you, Mel. Thank you. Okay, folks, if you want us to read your letter mm-hmm. on our podcast, mm-hmm. please send it to us. Because uh, really, we probably want to read it more than you want to write it, but do it anyway. <laughs> Look at all the research we do. Come on. Yeah. we. If you have a favorite gardening story, if you want to share with us what goes well, what are your favorite flops, mm-hmm. if you have some bad jokes, because we could, we always could use some bad jokes. You know, we should really have a garden club and people would give us money just to not do these terrible <laughs> jokes. Bad jokes, right? If you have any mm-hmm. stories about soil. Uh-huh. Or dirt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what, how, how are your worms doing? How many worms do you have per 12 inches of your yard? We want to hear about it. Have you ever dug anything up in your yard? Any garden treasure? 
All these things. We love hearing from you. All these things. We do. So write to us at UpsideDownTulips at Gmail or at our website at UpsideDownTulips.com. Good job. (laughs) Hey, Christy. I've had a bit of a rough week. Do you have something inspiring to share? Yes. And now for some garden inspiration. This quote is from the great Greek philosopher Plato. Oh, I went back. Wow. People are like dirt. They can either nourish you and help you grow as a person, or they can stunt your growth and make you wilt and die. Oh, so they're either soil or dirt. That's kind of deep. Thank you so much for listening. (laughs) We are... Edith Weiss, and Christy Montour Larson. If you enjoy Upside Down Tulips, won't you rate, subscribe, and tell a friend or two? Special thanks to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. If you would like to hear more of Denise's music, go to denisegentilini.com or you can find that link on our website. And special thanks to our friends and talented actors, Emily Van Fleet and Nathan Jones. And you know what? They just happen to have their very own podcast... It's called Twice as Less Not Perfect, a Messy Marriage Podcast. So they're a real-life couple, and they explore the mirth and myths of long-term relationships. It's really good. Everybody should check it out. Check it out. Oh, Christy, but don't forget. What? If you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. That's right. Upside down. I hope that Latvian writes us a letter. Yeah, be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs>